Hey YouTube, what's up? This is Ben from ShouldIGetIt.com. Welcome to another episode of Photo Tip Thursdays, Shooting Cars. This is a series where I teach you how to take better car photos every Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. This week, I wanted to take the new Mazda Miata out and show you how to shoot in the bright sun, but it's actually not terribly bright right now. There's a nice mix of overcast uh, and sun, so with this color, it doesn't show very, very well, so that is a video coming out in the future. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is critique some of the viewer photos. So a lot of you guys Instagram DM me at a car photographer wanting me to check out your profile or your photos to give you feedback. And so a couple weeks back, I said, send me photos and I'll take a look in this video. So thank you to those of you who sent in these photos. This is gonna be my first time looking at them. Uh, if there are some that I see, I can try to edit in Photoshop. I'll show you what I would do to them differently. And next week's episode is gonna be how to shoot a convertible car with a model. So we're gonna mix portrait photography with automotive and that'll be next Thursday's episode. So make sure you subscribe. And right now let's hop onto my computer into Lightroom and Photoshop to take a look at the photos that you guys sent in. All right guys, so now we are in Lightroom and I have about 24 images here, including a couple of raw files that I'm gonna walk through and kind of give my feedback, what I would do differently, maybe do a little bit of editing and I will show you guys that. But what I want to start with first is in episode one, I talked about how important it is to name your files when you import them. And I want to mention it's very important to name your files when you export them as well. So as you can see here from the few people that did send me photos and thank you so much for sending me your photos to critique it means a lot. Um, you can see that almost none of them have the car name. So there's front 330i, there's 330i back, and then there's Gallardo front aerial dark and that's it. The rest of them are just random file names, numbers, and for your sake, I would recommend when you export, make sure to call it, you know, Lamborghini Gallardo, then photographer's name, the year, and maybe the location. And that way, if you're uploading to Dropbox or emailing them, you can always find those images by searching in Dropbox or your email, and it'll just make your whole life a lot easier to be organized. So let's start with the first image here. We can see this, a cool Audi RS4 Avant, uh, definitely not in the States and with a uh, international license plate here. And so this is cool. I'm gonna start with this image. And the first thing I noticed when I looked at it was the little Audi logo that stayed on the license plate cover. So I don't know if, if this is how they have it or if you cloned out the number. If you cloned out the number, very, very good job. It looks you know totally blank. Uh, but I would clone out the Audi logo here and the little text on the right. It just looks a little bit strange when you look at it smaller uh, and it looks kind of like you forgot to take something out. Now I understand that is the Audi logo, that is actually how it is, but I would recommend cloning that out. The other thing is uh, use a polarizer on this image, that's episode one. You probably didn't have a polarizer with you, so you know, no harm, no foul. Uh, and the other thing is, as we spoke about, I believe in episode two, be very careful with distractions of things popping out of the car. So in this particular image, there are two things coming out of the car. There is the kind of anchor thing in the back that we see right here. And then there's this triangle shape coming out of the top. So both of these are a little bit distracting. What I would recommend doing is next time, shoot a little bit further back and maybe to the right. So that way you can have the car symmetrical between these two or shoot a little bit more to the left and leave more space on the right side. Regardless, leave a little bit more space here uh, and cover this kind of anchor thing by using the car. So overall good shot. I just clean up, you know, this little Audi logo here, shoot from a different angle next time. And then these little things are kind of distracting looking. So I would just clone those out very easily. The detail in the sky looks very good. Uh, this red is a little bit distracting. If you wanted, you could turn it down with a brush or if you wanted, you can actually turn it up. And so you can go to luminance, turn up the reds, and that will adjust all the reds in the image. That way you get the brakes to pop a little bit more. So good stuff. Now let's go on to this uh, Porsche McCann image. So first thing is I don't know if this image is straight. The car looks a little bit tilted uh, to that side. So what I'm gonna do is press R for the ruler, use the angle here, and then I'll go from the top right of the plate, or the, from the top left to the top right. Now it looks like it should be straight. I'm still totally not sure. So let me use another reference point. There we go, so that supposedly is straight according to Lightroom. Uh, so now you can see the horizon line, yeah, it's straight. So interesting the way the car looks here, a little bit angled, but anyways, we have that. Uh, there is not a whole ton of detail in the tire here. Kind of looks like it's on slicks. So I would brush this a little bit brighter and also brighten the wheels just a tiny bit so we can see more of the brakes. Looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm not sure if a polarizer was used here. If you have a polarizer next time, polarize the front, that would look good. 
and the reflections on the side actually work here, which is awesome. Uh, I would just get rid of like this little rock right here and we have the people in the back, which is fine. They're actually a cool element to the image, but if you didn't want them next time, just wait a couple more seconds, wait for them to walk by, take the image, or if there's always people, take one image, take another image, and then use layer masks to clone the people out. So we did the episode on how to clone uh, cars into the image, and you can use the same techniques to clone out. And speaking of getting things out, let me get Safari out of our way right here. Sorry about that, guys. So. Let's move on to the next shot. So here's a Mustang 5.0. Uh, this is a sick looking Mustang. And the first thing that I notice is not the busy background because that's fine, it kind of tells the story, but the purple aberration, the chromatic aberration on the wheels. And so to get rid of this, all you have to do is go to lens corrections, make sure those are applied. So, you know, hit enable profile, remove chromatic. And since this isn't a raw file, I can't do it uh, automatically, but you know, I can go into the Canon 50 millimeter F1.8, if they have it, don't. But anyways, go into manual for chromatic aberration, hit this little eyedropper tool and select the purple that's right here. And you can see that it just got rid of that. And so you can see before, after, now we got rid of all the kind of purple uh, flare and you know nastiness that was on those details. Now, the only other things I would really do to this image uh, is get rid of kind of these reflections right here. So you can go through the car and do that. And of course, take more time to fully get rid of the reflection. But the other thing uh, is, you know, make the front a little bit brighter in these dark areas for the grill and for kind of the fog lights. And the reason being is that you can't see the Mustang logo and that is, you know, something that's part of, part of the car. So you want the emblem to be shown up front as well as this 5.0 right here. And I can see from the rear of the image, it is a little bit out of focus. That's not the biggest deal. Uh, this looks like motion blur from having a slow shutter speed. And this was shot at 1 15th of a second at ISO 400. So in this case, I'd actually recommend bumping your ISO up closer to a thousand. And that way you could have a faster shutter speed. So whatever your lens is, you wanna shoot either at that or double uh, to get the most sharp image, the sharpest image you can. So if you're shooting with a 50 millimeter lens, you wanna shoot at 1 50th, so one slash five zero or one one hundredth of a second. So if you're shooting with like a 200 millimeter lens, you wanna shoot at one four hundredth of a second or at the slowest, shoot around one two hundredth. Now moving on to this Aston image, first thing that I noticed is this little anchor kind of coming out of the back of the car. So same thing, just move a little bit so that this is blocked up. You can go into Photoshop and remove that uh, using the tools that I discussed in episode four towards the end of that episode, so go in there. Um, next time, maybe if you can drop the top, lock the car so that these orange lights are not on, clean the license plate up. That's, you know, it, it doesn't look as strange here because there is that gap as compared to the Audi logo, which is on the very bottom. And it looks good. The only thing that I uh, want to mention is there's this green kind of ghosting haze right here. I think that's a lens flare. So watch out for that next time you shoot. And uh, the sky is pretty blown out. So I would recommend doing a graduated filter like we talked about uh, in episode six, I believe, where I showed you how to edit the sky. So you can see that you can bring more detail in, or if you wanted, you could actually dehaze this down and blow it up. And that way you can have the gradient just go up into kind of oblivion, make the sky very white and blown out. So that's totally up to you. The wheels look good. I would just brighten the front wheel a little bit using our wheels highlight trick that we've talked about in earlier episodes. So I can just create a circle right here and brighten that up right there. And of course, on a raw file, these edits look much better. Cool. So here's an image where uh, the viewer sent in this 488 headlight and asked me how to get rid of this effect that happens due to the polarizing filter. So you have two options. You can either go in to your saturation brush here in Lightroom, turn the saturation down to zero, and then brush it. You can also keep the effect which is what I do in most images. Uh, you know, if it's not super pronounced, I'll keep that. And usually headlights aren't this long, so it's more on the bottom. Or you can go into Photoshop and we can do this through a uh, adjustment layer. So let me find that image here, right here, headlight color. And we're gonna use the lasso tool and just select right here. So click around. And then we are going to feather the selection because you can see I'm selecting a little bit outside of it. 
So right there, we're gonna feather the selection by about 40 pixels and we can take an adjustment layer, so hue saturation, and we can just take the saturation slider and move it down. So we can do that there. We can also just do a little bit of desaturation. We can also make the headlights lighter or darker using this method. So I'm gonna to go to zero, saturation almost minus 100. And now you can see that we've made the headlights pretty much black and white. And if you want, you know, usually this effect does happen on the iris. So you can do a low opacity brush and kind of brush that polarized effect back in just on the part of the headlight that you want. All right, let's move on to the next image. So this is a raw file of a Porsche Carrera. I believe this is a 996. Uh, pretty cool shot here. So here is the edited file. Very, very well done on getting rid of the license plate and adding some more color and drama and pop to this image. It looks good. Again, recommendation is to use a polarizer. Uh, if you can next time, maybe don't have the owner in the car, or if you shoot with a polarizer, you know, have the owner pose or smile or give a thumbs up, whatever they want, usually. Uh, and in this case, all I would say is maybe brighten the front a tiny bit using either a curves layer or a brush in Lightroom. So depending on if you want to go into Photoshop or not, uh, that's it. And then there's, you know, some stuff up here that maybe you could patch out. But other than that, it looks good. And make sure, like we talked about in episode one, to clean your surroundings if you can. I mean, it's not that difficult to fix in Lightroom or Photoshop, but there's a little cigarette butt on the ground. Uh, just use a broom or something to clean that up. Now here we have a couple of raw files and then we have JPEGs. So let's talk about this image first. I think it looks pretty good. I actually like the light streak kept in here. It flows with the car very well. Very well done on the light paint. Maybe just a little bit more light in the bottom would be nice here but the wheels are well lit. You have a little bit of the tire as well, which is good. And the only thing is I would get rid of this bag right here, which you could do very easily using an exposure brush. So we could just go to exposure, bring this down, and we could start brushing in right here and get rid of that bag, or you can go into Photoshop and get rid of it. I'd probably also darken this fence post if you can, and then get rid of the little leaves on the ground. So go ahead and use your cleaning tools, either again, in Lightroom or Photoshop, whatever your preference may be for that image, get rid of that and it looks good. Now I noticed on this edit right here, you got rid of the cabinet lock, which is cool and you know kind of cleaned it up. The only other thing is uh, make sure you stay consistent. So as you can see, there's kind of this hole on this side. So make sure you copy that and clone it over here so it looks a little bit more realistic. You know, no one would really catch that unless they see the raw file. But on this image as well, uh, make sure you do the same cleanup on both shots. But overall, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, only thing on this image is I would keep the ground more like this and not vignette it as hard at the bottom. So that's cool. This image I really like, a very nice kind of gradient on the top, shows the lines of the hood well. You have the headlights, which is nice. Uh, you could do the headlight trick and turn on both the fog light and the headlights, add a little bit more you know, flare to the image, which is cool. I would just suggest a little bit more light here on the right side next time. And I'll show you a cool trick to brighten the emblem of the BMW logo. So this is the front of the 330i. And all we're gonna do here is use a curves layer to brighten up the image. So to do that, what you wanna do is you wanna zoom in and use your lasso tool or your pen tool or whatever you want to select the emblem. So I'm gonna click around it here roughly. And you guys will notice, you don't have to be a super perfectionist when you're making selections like this because you can just feather them. So we have that and then we're gonna to go to adjustment layers, curves and we're going to pull this up right here so we can have a brighter BMW emblem. So now you can see this is before, this is after. So that just brightens it up a little bit. And of course, the better you light it uh, naturally with the actual light, the more detail you can pull out of there. So that is just a little trick and uh, that's what I want to talk to you guys about with curves when shooting cars. So in this image, it looks pretty good. Uh, a little bit too bright on the BMW logo here, I'd say, so you can do curves the other way and darken it. And make sure next time that you light the tire, the bottom of the bumper, and the roof as well. So this is nicely light painted. I would, you know, for the parts that were hit, I would just say hit a little bit more. And uh, if you, you know, found yourself getting too many light streaks or something, do the same thing you did with this image and, you know, build it up of two or three different shots. But overall, well, uh, well done. All right, here's some more light paint. This, wow, different caliber of car. Uh, F12 TDF and the new Lamborghini Centenario, I believe it's called. So this shot looks pretty cool. 
first thing I noticed, and a lot of the stuff, as you guys I'm sure noticed already about this video, is removing things from shots because sometimes less is more. So uh, I would try to patch this handrail out. Yeah, it's a handrail. Kind of looks like you know an old man was driving this Lamborghini and left his cane just kind of like on the stairs lying there. Uh, so that kind of pops out of the car. If you're able, go in and try to get rid of this. At least you know up here on the stairs and uh, this top bar part, the actual little rail right here that's metal doesn't matter as much. But the light paint's pretty good. With a curves layer, I would recommend bringing a little bit more detail out right here on this front fin that's black. Same thing on the uh, Lamborg uh, Ferrari F12 TDF, sorry. On the rear of the car, I'd recommend a little bit more light. You can use a curves layer and a layer mask to brighten this up right here. And the other thing is next time I would recommend making the ground a little bit brighter to match this ground. That'd be cool if it went through all the way. And maybe uh, make the top of the building brighter as well. So you could have taken one more exposure and done, you know, if this was a minute long, double it to about a minute and a half or two minutes, and then have the top a little bit brighter so that all the apartment balconies are about this brightness instead of having this fade from the brighter ones to the darker ones. I, I think it just would have been nice to have more detail. And then I would go in and clean up the building a little bit. So there's this spot right here. There's this little red kind of emergency light, it looks like. So we're gonna get rid of that right there. And of course, go in, zoom in, clean that up a little bit more. Uh, we're gonna get rid of this spot and right here. And then under the cars, I believe these are little lights coming from the ground reflecting. I just don't think they look that good for this image. So I would go in and get rid of them. And that's just my kind of little edit there. The F12 TDF wheels are a little bit dark compared to the Lamborghini wheels. So I would try to brighten those again with a curves layer or next time just hit them for a little bit longer. Wow, cool. So this is a Tron looking Aventador. Uh, this is cool. I would just recommend a little bit more light on the mirror and maybe on the door and on the bottom right here. It looks cool. Definitely on the wheels. You want to have some more light next time and try to get rid of this pole and this reflection if you can. Uh, overall though, this is a very clean looking shot. Looks like there is a little cigarette on the ground. It's probably hard to notice at night, but just get rid of that. That's pretty easy. Uh, and then this sign right here. So I like that you have the condo lit up and that looks cool. But if you want to get rid of the sign, what I would recommend is, where is that event door? I would recommend using a lasso tool up here, selecting the corners of the image and then choosing a color to fill this sign in. So we got that right there. We can do our color selection tool and pick the white because you can see it's an off-white. It's kind of this dark like maroon color. And then we can just brush this in and now we can get rid of it. So you can either do that or if you want, you can select that, create a new layer. That's what we should have done. And then once you have the shape created, you can double click and go to color overlay you can select whatever color you want for that. I would probably just black it out and now it looks a little bit cleaner. So that's it, just a little bit of cleanup there and uh, brighten the rear of the car and the wheels if you can. But pretty good job for shooting a crazy chrome wrapped Aventador at night. Wow, now this is awesome. So this is a Koenigsegg one to one. I'm dreaming of seeing one of these on the road here in, in the States. Uh, maybe it'll happen in our lifetimes, but this looks very good. I just recommend a little bit more light on the top of the wheels here. Uh, it's cool that this light kind of comes from the back and you have that shadow in the front. Probably could be a little tiny bit more light on the right side of the car here in the front and on these louvers, but it looks very good overall. Uh, if you could, and if you want to next time, take another exposure just for the window so you don't have the streaks. I actually have a light painting tutorial on this channel if you want to see how to light paint without getting these streaks. And so that way you could see a little bit more of the interior. The only other thing I'd say maybe get rid of this sign here because this reflection is a little bit distracting and get rid of this orange marker on this motorbike, just like that. That's a very clean image, so cool. Here is a similar shot to the F12 and the Aventador. So we're looking right here, uh, you know, very similar stuff going on. I'll just get rid of the lights, clean up this red. We don't have the reflections here, which is nice. And then make all the apartments uniform if you can. Uh, or maybe light up a few more. So you could literally just copy this and put it over here and you can do each one or you can just do a couple and you can do a lot with this because it's uniform looking. You could you know, make kind of a shape if you wanted to with the lights, that'd be cool. But we're looking at the cars here overall. So again, just get rid of this handrail, a little bit more light maybe on the top right of this wheel, but good job of not blowing out 
the uh, paint here on the LaFerrari. This is actually very well done. And all in all, this is a good image. I would say the cars are very close together, so very impressive parking there. And uh, that's about it. Again, the ground, if the ground was lit more evenly, I think it would look good. So if you do have an exposure that's a longer exposure, not even light painted, you can mix the ground in and that would look pretty sweet. So try, try lighting up the ground a little bit more next time to fill out the frame. Wow, okay. So this is a Bugatti Veyron Mansory edition, it looks like. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, this shot is actually amazing because it looks like it's uh, naturally lit because of the window light coming in, the shadows and all that stuff. And then it is also actually light painted on the car, it looks like, because you can see the light paint streaks here. So that is kind of a conflict there. Overall, super clean image. The textures look amazing. You know, you got the taillights perfectly. You got the shadows perfectly. <coughs> Excuse me. But the only thing is I would go into Photoshop and try to patch this light reflection out because it's not fully selling the effect that this is naturally lit because this isn't, you know, this style where it looks like it's light paint. This looks naturally lit. So if you can, it's going to be very tedious. Go into Photoshop, clean this up, and maybe using a curves layer, brighten the Mansory logo right here because the Mansory is darker than the more than tradition at the bottom. So I'd just try to even that out a little bit, but all in all, amazing shot. All right, on to the McLaren 675 LT. So this shot looks like it's at a dealership in a parking lot, not bad. Uh, I would just recommend doing the double, double polarizer method so you can see a little bit through on the right side as well, not have the super bright reflection here. Uh, brighten the wheels a little bit and brighten the grille as well because I know this car has the telemetry pack. So it has the camera on the front. You wanna brighten this a little bit more. There's a lot of mesh detail here in the 675 LT. And then just get rid of a couple of things. So get rid of the parking lines, get rid of this AC vent, and let's get rid of this uh, hose faucet thing right there. Got that. And all in all, I think it's a pretty good looking shot. So this just could use a little bit of cleanup. Looks good. Nice job of using a polarizer to see through to those seats and the matching seat belt. That's pretty cool on there. Uh, overall, looks good. So let's move on to the next shot. So here we have a Lamborghini Gallardo. Uh, kind of similar to the uh, second image I think we talked about with the Porsche, where there's not enough detail in the black. So the tires kind of just, you know, black out to nothing. You can't see the tread on them. You also can't see the black on the bottom here. So you can barely make out the exhaust. So I would brighten this up again using curves or using a uh, brush to brighten this because I can't tell if, if it's this cool mesh right here or if it's like a reflective plastic. So just go a little bit brighter on that. Uh, and this shot would look very cool. Very nice step to field, nice location, nice car, looks clean. And again, if you can double polarize, so you get rid of the reflections on here, because it looks like uh, just a little bit of a fence or you know, continuation of that in the reflection. Not bad, looks good, just bring the, uh, the dark back up. Same thing here with this M3. Uh, right here we have the tire, <clears throat> excuse me, going around the car and then it goes into pitch black. You can't see where the road is. You can't see where the tire stops. You can't tell how wide these tires are. And I'm pretty sure on the M3, I think they're like 295s probably, something like that. Pretty wide tires uh, and you can't tell because it just goes into full black. So again, a little bit brighter on the bottom. Only gripe is use your uh, angles to one, not get people in the reflection. I understand that's hard to control when you have you know, the owners out in the shoot. Looks like this is the owner probably taking a cell phone photo of his own car or whatever. Uh, just use the angles to block that a little bit. In this image, it would have been nice. You cut the exhaust perfectly, which is cool, and you got the whole tail light in, so you didn't cut anything off. That's great. The blues of the sky and the car look really good. I would just recommend maybe next time getting the full exhaust and uh, maybe the um, BMW logo in the middle. That would be a cool touch, but all in all, this is a great shot. You know, just clean up a dot here, a dot there. Depends how nitpicky you want to get with it. Uh, and you can see when you zoom in, there's chromatic aberration on here. Not the biggest deal, you know, when people are looking online or on Instagram, but you can go in and let's see, there's just not enough detail uh, because this image isn't that big, but you know, there's a little bit of greens here. So you can go through and you can pick and you can get rid of those how I showed you before. All right, so here is a Lamborghini Gallardo shot. And this shot looks cool. Uh, next time, if I were shooting it, I would you know, move the car forward a little bit because he has that transparent uh, cover on the engine. So you could see a little bit more of the engine, which would be awesome. But the other thing that doesn't really bug me, but kind of is hard to understand is why this white line doesn't go all the way back. 
and why it's a white line and a yellow line and the owners in the car. So again, uh, what I would recommend is, you know, if it's hard to have the owner move out of the shot, have them get out of the car and stand here, take one shot, then have them stand here, take another shot, and then mix those two together. So clone him out of the image. Uh, and you can do that very easily if you have them stand in two different locations and you're shooting on a tripod, kind of like our cloning cars episode, but instead of cloning someone in, take someone out using the layer masks tool. But I want to show you really quick what I would do with the parking lines uh, or whatever lines it is. So first I would probably get rid of the white line. So that's an option, right? So we can go through here, we can do content aware fill. So we could do that. We could also get rid of the yellow lines the same way if we want to, or we could take this white line right here. We could click in, oops, and we could select the line and just kind of, let me feather this by like five pixels. We could just move it down here and we can make it continue all the way down, right? So we can do this. And that way the line goes all the way down. Of course, I'd make it a little bit thinner here and here, but you can make the line go all the way down if you want to. I'm personally not a fan of it. I would just get rid of it. So again, let's go back one more step to where it was gone. Come on now. Oops. Uh, so I would get rid of this. And what you could do is if you wanted, you could get rid of this and then clone the yellow line if you want to make it kind of like a pit lane. So you could go like this, you could copy this over. So hit copy, paste, move it over this way. And of course it looks weird. So we're gonna type in flip horizontal, flip that. And now we have the lines right here and we could play with the blending modes a little bit. I think multiply would be the way to go here. Nope, uh, let me find it real quick. Just color. No. Screen. So we could paste that over here and now we have the same lines right here kind of looking like a pit lane. And then at this point, I would just go in here and get rid of this curved part just like that, let's do content aware fill. And now we're clean. So you can see this is before, this is after, or if we want, we could just get rid of the yellow lines in general. So for this shot, I just, you know, have the owner stand outside for it and then do, uh, do the lines like that. And it looks a little bit more blue on the left side here than the right. So I would go in and paint a little bit of a whiter white on that, or you could do a uh, color balance adjustment layer and then use a layer mask to clean that up. So now we're on to the final shot a sick Bugatti Veyron. I'm pretty sure this is Ben Chen's car from Gold Rush Alley 9. So this is very recent. This looks clean. All I would do is get rid of the parking lines, uh, brighten the wheels a little bit in the front and the back, and you're done. So hopefully you guys watched this entire episode. If you did, thank you so much. Thanks for the support. <clears throat> I can barely breathe. My throat is super dry, but I hope you guys learned a lot from uh, this feedback right here. I know a lot of it was just cleaning up shots and using curves layers to bring the brightness up and getting the wheels, but uh, that is a very big thing. You know, you want to get all the details of the car. You want to make sure that you can see the bright parts, you can see the dark parts, and that things don't mix too much in the shot. So I have to go drink some water, but I'll see you next Thursday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thanks for watching. I'll see you then. Peace.